You ever look at the interfaces in Geometry Dash and just think, what? Like, they're not terrible by any means, but they're definitely different from what you'd see in most other games. Now, I don't have anything against the menus in Geometry Dash, in fact I even style some of my own websites after them, but lately I've been thinking about how they could be improved. So you know what, why not make a video on it? With the power of terrible editing and mediocre graphic design skills, I present to you my thoughts on Geometry Dash's interfaces, as well as ideas for how to spice them up. Also, quick disclaimer, I know Robtop saw that one video and fixed the Sub-Zero coins, but this video isn't meant to be me demanding more changes for the game. I just have some ideas I want to throw out there, and some of them are definitely a stretch anyways. They'll probably never be added, but at the very least it's kind of fun to talk about. Also, don't expect good editing on this video. I'm lazy, so the best you're getting is PowerPoint quality. I just want to ramble about stuff. I'll also throw in some messages in the corner to mark my editing progress so you can watch me degrade into madness. Alright, starting off with the icon kit. It got cleaned up a little bit in update 2.2, and honestly it looks pretty good. So what would I do differently? Well, first off, I don't really think this tap for info message is necessary, it just takes up a lot of space just to state something that you only ever need to know once. So I just remove it and open up an extra row of icons. Also, this may be a little crazy, but maybe redesign the lock so that you could see the icons you haven't unlocked yet. I think it's more fun for players to work towards a specific icon that they like, rather than never knowing what they're going to get without Google. And of course, there could always be a couple of hidden top secret icons. Actually, speaking of that, you know those icons where you check how to unlock it and it's just like, nope? I feel like it would make sense to change their lock color, or just, for the love of god, give them some descriptions. Finally, there's probably room somewhere to throw in a button that only shows icons you have unlocked. With so many new ones coming in 2.2, I could see this being really useful. Now, I really like the new color menu in the icon kit, especially since it lets you preview your entire icon set at once. So, you know what, let's build off of that a little bit. Tap on one of your icons and boom, that's the one that'll be displayed on comments and leaderboards. Also, you know those settings like switch wave trail color and switch dash fire color? Throw them in the icon kit too. A little more organized that way, especially since there's probably people who didn't even know those settings existed. Actually, we'll get to the settings menu later. But first, I just want to make a quick stop at the game's title screen. I actually love this menu, it's simple and even kind of fun to play around on. There's not much I'd change here except maybe remove the more games button. 2.2 adds Twitch and Discord buttons which have a bit of a weird layout, and to that I say, Robtop, just remove your logo. I actually feel like it might be a good idea to add in a credits menu to acknowledge contributions to the game, like the fonts, the community made icons, or my boy Kevin McLeod who has no credit in the game, despite being responsible for the three shop themes and even the song I'm playing right now. To us YouTubers who have to worry about copyright, he's like a god. You did him dirty, Rob. Alright, here's an interesting idea. You know the random icons that fly by on the menu? I feel like it would be really interesting if it only showed icons and colors that you currently have unlocked. You start with a really small and boring set, but it expands as you make progress in the game. After enough achievements, different game modes can start appearing, and at some point the two achievement icons will be slipped in as well. I don't know about you, but I personally think this is a really interesting idea. It just makes everything you do feel a little more rewarding. Feel free to discuss this one in the comments, I'd love to hear what you think. Alright, level search page, my belothed. There is definitely lots of things that could be cleaned up here, so I'm just gonna go for it. First up, add the level ID somewhere. Just do it. Also, do you have any idea what number this is? I don't, so let's keep the download and like counts abbreviated. I think an optional compact mode would go a long way for this page, so here's a little mock-up I made of that. Or alternatively, you could click a level to view more information about it, like the description or even tags, ooh. Also, Vit12 on Twitter pitched this really cool idea of showing a little thumbnail of the level right on the search page, and although I thought that would be way too hard to implement, Rob said on Discord that it's actually something he wants to look into, which is really hype and I'd love to see it, but I also think that the daemon list is proof that the community can't be trusted with custom thumbnails. Anyways, over in this corner, I'd tweak the page number so it's a bit easier to understand, add a button to jump to the last page, and add a shuffle button which takes you to a random page, or picks a random level. These are all things on my website GD Browser, and they work really nicely. Finally, 2.2 adds these checkboxes to the Save Levels menu, which are useful but honestly look pretty gross, so I would just hide them and make them reappear when you press an edit button, kinda like when you tap and hold something on a phone. And let's not forget about the most important feature, a big obnoxious subscribe button. You should press it. I only uploaded like 4 videos this year, it's not like I'm gonna spam your feed or anything. We gotta work together here, I need to pass Lemon Cake to prove that my content is better than Geometry Dash World's Hardest Dash Orb Newt Newt Hashtag Shorts. Anyways, where were we? How about the actual level page? Overall I think it's fine, and it's cool seeing how much it's evolved from earlier versions of the game. Everything feels more or less in place, except for the folder button over here and these arrows which... I forgot even existed. I'd move the folder next to the favorites button and put the arrows in the saved levels menu instead. Maybe with the edit button I mentioned. 
You see these four rows of info over here? I feel like making them clickable would be really nice, although it might be difficult to communicate that you can click them without making it ugly. For example, download count could show how many times it was downloaded that week, which we know is possible because the trending tab stores that info. The like count could break into individual likes and dislikes. The length could show the exact time of the level. And I guess orbs could show your orb percentage in the level since it's not always the same as your normal mode progress. That one's a bit of a stretch. I really like the badges next to the level creator's name, but they could also be confusing for new players, so it'd be nice if clicking them gave some info on what they meant. Also, why stop at just two badges? I've got a few suggestions for more. How about daily and weekly badges, where clicking it could show the date that the level is the daily? Or a two-player badge, which simply indicates that the level uses two-player mode? A seizure warning for really flashy or fast-paced levels? There could be an option for it when uploading the level, but moderators could also override it. And with a system like that, I guess a sensitive content badge would make sense in case you're uploading a level with an inappropriate song or just collab level by Minecap. I could go on with all these crazy ideas, but I want to move on with the video, so I'll just rush through them. Once you like or rate a level, you should be able to go back and change it. The rating menu should also highlight the difficulty that the creator requested. The level info button should give an exact upload date, and maybe object count and game version could be thrown in as well. Finally, settings button in the corner. You should be able to open this menu from anywhere. The fact that it's only accessible from the title screen is ridiculous. Speaking of settings, just why? They're completely unorganized, scattered across multiple different menus, and overall it's just way too hard to find what you're looking for. It's nice to have all these options, but this is not the way to do it. It's only going to get worse over time, so just categorize them. There's an infinite number of ways to do it, but here are the categories that I would recommend. We got gameplay settings with options like auto retry and auto checkpoints, graphics settings with things like low detail, resolution, vsync. Wait, why is low detail in the help menu? Performance settings with options like smooth fix, increasing max levels, move optimization. Accessibility settings like disabling shake, flipping two player controls, or labeling the portals and orbs. And finally, editor settings with, well, all the editor stuff. There's a lot of them, and they're split into different places for some reason. Also, some settings can just be removed entirely, like show restart button should always be enabled, and stuff like the high object alert is just pointless. Here's an interesting thought. What can we do to fix up the game's pause menu? 2.2 split up the progress bar and percentage settings, but that's about it. Although, hear me out. How about we just get rid of this whole bottom area and offer the entire settings menu instead? You know, like every other game's pause menu? Actually, wait, no, I think BTD6 has the same problem. Anyways, from there, I would probably do something like this. And you could call this cheating, but I would also throw in a little eyeball button which hides the UI. It could be especially good for screenshots. I'm not really sure what this fifth button in the middle would be. I was originally thinking the like button, but it's a little pointless when you can only press it once. Copying the level could work, but not all the levels allow it, unless you have Mega Hack. So my final idea is an info button, which could just pull up the comment menu. What's especially nice is that it also lets you glance the level's description and ID, and maybe we could take it further by adding even more information like difficulty and like count. Definitely looks ugly here, but I think it's a start. Alright, final thing I want to talk about is the level editor, but before we get to that, just a few other rapid fire ideas. Add pages to the leaderboard and the ability to look up anyone on the global tab. Chess rewards are actually stored in your save file, so in the treasure room you should be able to see what a chess reward was. You know this one info box that appears like everywhere? You should update it to explain how the rating system and things like epic levels work. For the search filters page, remove the demon difficulty submenu and just place it over other difficulties. Also, make this X button clear the search bar as well, and get rid of the confirmation message because you really don't need that. Also, highlight the plus button if you enable the filter inside of it so you don't have to check. And this might just be me, but if you're searching by ID and you accidentally put a space on the end, just trim it off. Okay, so, the level editor. When I started playing Geometry Dash, it looked like this. If you went back in time and showed me what the editor would eventually look like, I would have just been like, oh my god. These buttons are square now. So how would I fix the editor? Well, it's already been done. There's the Better Edit mod, which adds all sorts of cool new editor tools, but more importantly, also improves on existing things. You got the View tab, auto-saving, a cooler edit menu, custom key bindings, a ton of new settings, oh my god, make it stop, why are there so many? Now, Better Edit is cool and all, but I've got all sorts of other random ideas, and obviously I'm gonna force you guys to listen to them as well. First off, UI Scale. I'm talking the ability to just shrink all the buttons. I have pretty good eyes, I don't need this trash can to take up 0.54% of the screen. And how about we make the block palette collapsible too, so you can just open and close it whenever it's needed. Speaking of that thing, how many pages does the blocks tab have again? One, two, three, four, five, seven, oh my god, it goes off the screen. You don't have to agree with me, but I, for one, think that these should be collapsed into categories. Very clean, look at that, nice graphic design skills, Craig. Why, thank you. 
I think I mentioned this idea before, but these buttons in the corner can definitely be cleaned up. The three edit buttons could all be added to a single screen, and paste color could just be moved to this nice paste state UI that better edit added. So that gives us three more buttons to put here. If I had to pick, I would go with build helper, select all, and this extra settings menu coming in 2.2. But if you're a more experienced creator, let me know what you would pick in the comments. There's probably infinite ways to clean up the editor, but the last thing I want to talk about is trigger interfaces. They're weird. And they're also kind of inconsistent for some reason, like with the style of the slider they use, if the text is gold or yellow, how many decimal places you can type, or which corner the help button is in. It's just weird. And as much as I want to vouch for standardized trigger layouts like what you'd see in other editors, I feel like we're all way too used to what we have now. But I definitely think there's some things that could be done. For example, you know how a multi-trigger option appears when you check off spawn triggers? That's pretty cool and all, but can you guess where this one will appear? That's right, the bottom right corner. But what's so wacky about this is, you can't even have a trigger that's both touch and spawn triggers, so why not just change the touch trigger checkbox to multi-trigger? It's such an easy solution and it's bothered me for so long. Alternatively, maybe these should just be moved to a different menu like edit special since every trigger has them. From there, I think standardizing some positions would be nice. Maybe instead of selecting the group ID from inside of the trigger, you could just do it here. That way, it's always in the same spot for every trigger. I don't know, maybe that would be too hard to adjust to, but come on, just be consistent, Rob. Uh, here's a mock-up for better easing selection. A drop-down menu would be ideal, but I don't even think that's coded into the game. Also, did you know that the mode that's just called Ease actually represents all of the more standard easing types? It just lets you type in whatever exponent you want. I feel stupid for not knowing this until recently. Uh, what else? I don't know, I can go on forever with these. Also, wait, why does the save button have a confirmation pop-up while the other two don't? Like, yeah, I want to save. Why do I have to confirm this? Okay, well, this video turned out longer than I expected. I just wanted to put some random ideas and mockups out there, so sure, I'll turn it into content. I'm all settled into university now, and work honestly hasn't been that bad, so you could hopefully expect a couple more videos soon. Congrats on making it this far without getting bored. Uh, check out the better edit and better info mods if you want slightly nicer GD experiences. And shout out to RobDub's best interface, the account registration page.